and this is the Bonastic Art Show. The show where we talk about everything, anything, something, and sometimes nothing. <laughs> now today, we have a special guest for you, which is Neil, the manager. But before we get into that, I want you to understand, time spent understanding people is never wasted. Sit with winners, and the conversation will surely be different. <laughs> Followers think and talk about the problem, but leaders think and talk about the solution. For real. Now today is all about the P-O-L-C. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Now, if this man was organizing slavery, there's no way we would get out of it. For real. This man can manage the heck out of something. True. So luckily, ladies and gentlemen, he decided to manage a brighter future. Yeah, a brighter future. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we now present to you Mr. Neil Sutton, the manager. Ladies and gentlemen, very nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. He's a very hard man to even get hold of. So it's an honor for you and me to have such a professional around us. Like I said before, if slavery was managed by this man, <laughs> trust me, we wouldn't get out of it. Luckily, he decides to manage a brighter future. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sutton, one more time. Good evening. Good evening. Good to meet you again. Yes. So tell me, Mr. Sutton, we'll get straight into it. What really gets you into that field? What was your first job as a manager? Oh, many years ago, my first job as a manager was working in a bakery. In a bakery? Uh, um, yeah, not a, not a sort of shop type bakery, but an industrial bakery, uh, which was making products for a variety of supermarkets. And I joined it just as a, a little temporary job. Mm. Because so, I finished doing some schoolwork and then just progressed up through. Find I enjoyed managing people, managing workflow, managing okay. the day-to-day -day activities. So before we go, Mr. Sutton, before we go into your progress, now I'm trying to teach the younger ones, not only the younger ones, but those who feel like they want to get into management or that field of life. So your first job we'll focus on for now. Did you feel confident as a manager or no, not to begin with. I think, um, like many people that are made and promoted into being a manager, you get promoted because you turn up on time, you're a good bloke or a good woman, um, you get the job done, and people go automatically, well, that person's going to be okay as being a manager. Oh, okay. So that's not necessarily the best way of becoming a manager, but it sort of is uh, an avenue that most people find themselves in when they become a manager for the first time. Okay. They're pushed into it, but developing the skills takes a lot longer, a lot, lot longer. So ladies and gentlemen, as we just understood, what works for one person not necessarily works for somebody else. But apparently he was a very good guy at work. <laughs> Remember, timing is very important, right? It doesn't matter where you start off, because this man can manage the queen of palace. So he started right from the bakery. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mr. Sutton, as everybody knows, you can manage the heck out of things. Now, from when you started up to now, what you see that's different in you? Before you answer that, because I think before you can manage anything in life, managing yourself is very important. Yeah, definitely. And as I said, um, most people get pushed into being a manager because they happen to be the best person around at that moment in time. But that doesn't necessarily make you a manager. The difference between then and now for me is I know a bit more about people skills, um, about how to motivate people, about how to understand and empathise with people, and I think very critically, not necessarily one type of management style is appropriate for every single individual the same. Right. Different people like to manage in a slightly different way. To put that better, ladies and gentlemen, different folks, different strokes. <laughs> so, you do it in your way. So, another question I would like to ask. Now, if you're managing a place, 
is it very important that the people like you or as a manager it doesn't matter whether the people like you or not? To be fair, people don't need to like you. What they need to do is respect you as much as you respect them. So that two-way respect is better than being the friend of a person yeah. because you have to be able to differentiate yourself from the employee and manager because sometimes there are difficult conversations to have. Yes. But if you treat your team with respect and expect them to treat you with respect, that's the most important thing about being a team manager and also a member of the team is that mutual respect for each other's position. So a question for you. I wanted to find out, was managing your dream from childhood were you pushed into it or you accidentally <laughs> just thought it suits you? So I suppose um, my childhood dream was really sad because I wanted to be an estate agent selling beautiful houses. Um, I ended up doing it for a couple of years, um, selling concrete boxes in Swindon. <laughs> so it didn't work out as the dream. Um, try. And then I sort of fell into management, I suppose. I fell into being a manager through my first job um, found that I enjoyed it and over the course of the next 20 plus odd years um, found that managing people and developing people, developing a team and developing a culture within a team was something that I actually enjoyed. Um, I won't say I was perfect at it to begin with from day one but it's the skill that grew over time um, and now my philosophy very much is as a manager I'm only as good as the people around me. And I think if you carry that with you, you're only as good as your people around you. Okay. So it's key. So that's very good. So one last question for the people out there. What is the ethic or the code for you as a manager? What is the things that drive you and think I live by that code? I think for me, it's two things really. It's that respect everybody that you're working with and get that respect back. And I think the next thing is, find out what each individual's skill is, what motivates them, what makes them want to come to work. Because everyone will have a different reason for coming to work. Some will be friendship, some will be money, naturally. Or others will be because they enjoy it. But if you can find out what's the key motivator for someone turning up to work every day and tap into that as their, as their key driver, you can get the best out of that individual. And get the best for yourself out of that individual as well. So you see, what I get out of that, ladies and gentlemen, is that you have to do your homework as a manager. You have to know your surroundings, understand your surroundings, and work with your surroundings or for your surroundings, however it might suit you as a manager. Thank you again, Mr. Neil Southern, for joining the Brunastic Art Show. Okay, Mr. Southern. Uh, you can tell or talk to me, ask me whatever you want because we're not sure if we're going to see you that often. So the floor is yours. So you've spoken, spoken to me a bit about what it is to be a manager, what it is to manage people and how you do that. So one of the things I've learned over the last 20 plus years of being a manager of individuals and groups of people is that it doesn't do your hair any good. True. True. You have a fine, fine, fine head of hair. What advice would you give to a politically challenged person like me? Well, with me, I think hide your hair as often as possible <laughs> from the world and you will preserve it. <laughs> Sounds like a good, good guy. <laughs> or hide yourself, one of the two. <laughs> now, I have a joke for you. Now, since we're dealing with a manager, obviously the topic will be about management. But anyway, they had this manager, this bank manager, who really didn't like his boss to start with. Well, he didn't think he was getting paid properly. And he had a staff who was working alongside him who gave him a lot of pressure every day. So he didn't like it. So he decided on his day off, he's gonna come and rob the bank. So he turned up in the bank with his ski mask on and his gun in his hand. When he arrived, everybody laid on flat. He collected the money and just as he was about to walk out, one of the cashiers grab the schema of his face. <laughs> then, he turned casually and just shoot her in the face. Then, the guy he didn't like, he think, what the heck, I should get rid of him anyway. He shot him in the face. 
Then he shouts out, did anybody else see my face? <laughs> Silence. He asks again, did anybody else see my face? And right in the corner, his boss slowly put up his hands and says, my wife had a pick. <laughs> so, Mr. Sutton, thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the Bonastic Art Show. So we're going to have a final word from Mr. Sutton, Mr. Neil, the manager, and uh, we will try and end it there. So, so Bruno, how do you manage yourself? Hey, how do I manage myself? I manage myself by that one quote, which I heard from people, my parents and everything around, and they said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching again and hope to see you soon with me, the manager. Thank you.